Hello, will we be able to um, begin shortly? I was just getting ready to ask you the same thing. Okay. Adora, uh, very good. We have some more people here who are here today, and, and uh, um, let me tell you how much we appreciate your, the opportunity she to see. have you with us today. Um, to the people here, I think you're in for a treat. You have an opportunity to hear really a renowned author, and uh, I'm not exactly sure. How old are you? Tell me that while we're while we're uh, introducing you. Oh, it's not an impolite question. No, I'm kidding. I'm 11 years old today. 11 years old. I was. I said 10, but I, I wouldn't say that so that you could hear me. But also, she's a, a, a renowned literacy expert, and she's been featured on Oprah, CNN, Young People Who Rock, Good Morning America, NBC, BBS, and many other programs. Uh, she's going to talk about uh, literacy and the different video conferencing types of um, programs that she can do for your schools. So, Adora, I appreciate you being with us again, and, and I'm going to turn it over to you. We also have a, a videographer here in the back. Oh, wonderful. Hello, everyone. My name is Adora Sweetalk, as you know. I am the author of Flying Fingers, Master the Tools of Learning Through the Joy of Writing, and this is the book that I published at the age of seven. More recently, I've been working on this book called Dancing Fingers, and this is a selection of my poetry along with my older sister, Adriana's poetry. So a big mix of both reflective, humorous, modern, a huge variety of different poems from uh, both of us. So today I'd like to talk a little bit about what I do through video conferencing my distance learning programs and also um, what I do for students and teachers. So here we are, introduction to distance learning programs from Doris Spiesock. Let's get started. So here's a bit of an introduction. Uh, I've been teaching writing workshops since I published my first book at the age of seven. I've been featured on Oprah, CNN's Young People Rock, NBC Nightly News, and lots of other programs. Today, I use new technology like video conferencing and webcasting to reach students in places as diverse as Costa Rica, Dubai, and Canada. And that's one of the cool things I find about video conferencing is that it allows me to really reach out to the world and share my message with um, international citizens. Introduction then to you. My presentations feature live writing demonstrations, interactive activities, and storytelling. My social studies workshops teach kids, and sometimes even teachers, how to use writing as a creative learning tool across the disciplines. I provide kids with a tangible and exciting example of where writing can take them. So here are a few quotes from what others are saying about my programs. This is from Karen Bate, an English journalist in Britain. She executed her presentation with deafness and determination, holding her audience all of whom were old or which were older and her spellbound, which is very flattering, I think. And that brings me to another point. I actually teach audiences both who are younger than me and older than me and the same age. I have taught audiences of kindergartners, first graders, second graders, third graders, fourth graders, fifth graders, sixth graders, high schoolers, college students, teachers, as well as senior citizens. And this one, I think, was one of the coolest. She inspires people to know that they can do anything if they put their minds to it. And this was a sixth grade student. And the reason that I find this very flattering is because that's what I try to do in my presentations. My goals center around, my goals are to show kids that writing is fun, empowering, and exciting as well, of course. So that, that is what I try to do in my presentations. I offer a variety of programs, including descriptive writing, poetry writing, and writing inspirations. Some of my distance learning series include Writing Dynamic, Write to Learn, Flying Fingers, Book Reviews Made Easy, A Kid's Guide to U.S. Government, and Acing Your State Writing Assessments and Beyond. So to see a full list, you can go to CILC.org and search Adoras We Talk. And so, as you might notice, my presentations really cover a huge variety of different topics, civics, history, social studies, even um, more recently, I'm, I'm trying to come up with some more programs for geography uh, to incorporate in with that, as well as more um, writing across the curriculums, and then of course I have core writing series. And here are sample pages from some of my presentations. The first is on personal narrative writing, and the second is on one of my favorites, child labor. 
So, this is from the personal narrative slide. We face conflicts and obstacles every day. For example, deciding what to wear, arguing with a friend, running to catch a bus, taking a test, learning how to cook, trying to concentrate, trying to make a basket, overcoming a fear. All of these are conflicts and obstacles in our everyday life. And then here's a slide from my child labor slide, the right to learn presentation. So here I asked a question to students, are you a child laborer? So most of us have to do chores at home. Do you do chores at home? Tell us what some of those chores are and do you consider yourself a child laborer or not? And then amazingly, every single kid raised their hand saying, yes, I'm a child laborer. And I was thinking, wow, America, we're working our kids way too hard. Well, maybe not really, but uh, basically, it showed me that I needed to teach them what child labor really was and give them some examples of it in history and in modern day, in our modern day world, which I did. As you might notice, there are lots of interesting visuals like clip art in the slides that I showed you, and I love to use relevant art to get kids excited about my presentations. And you know, I know that there are many different types of learners. Some people are visual learners, other people auditory, etc. cetera. Um, and so I try to accommodate all different styles of learning in all my presentations. I also use a variety of other fun tools like action buttons, color coding, and auto shapes to spice up my PowerPoints, which makes them more interesting to students. And of course, I also ask kids lots of questions in my presentations to get them thinking about the topic that we're focusing on. For instance, in the slide about child labor, I asked students whether they considered themselves child laborers, as you notice. In the personal narrative slide, I might ask the kids about their own conflicts and obstacles. What kind of conflicts and obstacles do you have in your own everyday life? And in my presentations, I do live writing on my computer, taking suggestions from students to create an example of the type of writing I want them to use. So let's pretend, and some of you really are students, I know, so let's pretend that those adults in the room, uh, are, let's pretend that you're students, and then for all the students who really are students here, then you just uh, act your part. And I'll show you what I mean by live writing by doing a collaborative writing exercise with all of you. So first, I'll start out by asking you questions. I am going to open up a document on my computer. So I need to make sure you're able to see this. So when I press presentation, you're able to see the Word document, correct? Yeah. yeah. Okay, great. So basically, our exercise is we're writing a descriptive paragraph about a treehouse. And this is part of a descriptive writing exercise. So of course we want to answer questions about the five senses, uh, what things look like, smell like, sound like, etc. So let us begin. And firstly, I want to ask you, what color is the tree house? Throw out a color. Any color. Any color. Okay, that's a great color. So let me see for a minute. Sorry, I need to adjust the view here. And, okay, so blue, beautiful color. The blue treehouse, but we can get even more specific. Is it giant? Is it minuscule? Tiny? What is the size of the treehouse? Big. Big. The blue treehouse was very big. Okay, but let's see. And I would show students a little bit about word choice. Now they can use the synonyms function. So we could also come up with the word like large, full size, life size. Uh, small would be the opposite. Huge, gigantic, giant, immense. So let's try immense. Well, maybe that doesn't describe the best. So let's see if we can find a synonym for immense. Huge, vast, enormous, massive, gigantic. Okay, sure. It was very, was very gigantic. It was a gigantic construction. It had, let's see, how many windows does it have? Throw out a number. Four. Four. Okay, it had four huge windows, stained glass windows, and uh, let's see, five arched wooden doors. That one I can't put myself. Okay, now let's think of some special things about the treehouse. What's so special about the treehouse? Does it have any cool things inside? Can you do interesting things inside the treehouse? What are the perks of this treehouse? Well, it's sorry? Yeah. It's a club. I'm still not hearing that, sorry. It's a club. Oh, it's a club, I see. Okay, thank you. 